Donald Trump saying both sides are responsible for the violence in uh, Charlottesville and um, that uh, the people, half the people down there, even on the, uh, among the alt-right, they were there only to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. They had no other um, agenda at all. For the first time uh, in I don't know how many decades, uh, the President of the United States uh, has legitimized, if you will, the presence of the KKK uh, and white supremacists uh, and their, um, their whole movement. Van Newkirk joins us, staff writer for The Atlantic. Van, when you saw the president yesterday, what was your reaction? Uh, the, that was my reaction. Um, just, I, I had a long sigh. Uh, I, I figured something like that was coming after uh, he did release the statement, what was it? Uh, uh, Saturday. Saturday and, sat, and, and then Monday. Saturday and then Monday saying, <coughs> okay, he, he was... <laughs> Somebody held his feet to the fire, and he finally yeah, said yeah. he he condemned white supremacy. And I, I knew when I heard that last statement, when I heard the sort of reluctance um, and mm. just the sort of delay in it, I knew that he was going to have to come back and basically say and make clear that nobody makes Donald Trump do anything. And this was a you know full throated rejection of what he said in that speech basically you know both sides and then although he he criticizes both sides he goes out and explicitly attacks people who are taking down Lee statues he, he takes the side of, of the, the let's be generously call them alt-right people yeah, uh, in, yeah. in the park he takes their side on this and you know, he uses the same exact rhetoric that people who are in those marches are saying. Okay, oh, you take down Lee, what's next? Washington, he's a slave owner too. And, it, and it's one of those things where this is clear and that Trump is not on the side of people who are fighting white supremacy right now. It, it, it's just clear. Um, I was in the Charlottesville community, you know, the black community, mm -hmm. uh, earlier in this week, speaking to them, talking to people in barbershops and churches and other and, and meetings they were, were having. Were there last weekend? Uh, I was not there during the weekend. Yeah, um, yeah. It was, uh, we had a reporter who could blend in a little better than me down there <laughs> mm -hmm. during the protest. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I did go down and I, I spoke to people. I don't think we talked a lot about the people who were the victims of Nazis in the Klan who live in the Charlottesville community who had to go and see that resurgence, the largest white supremacist march in decades, happened outside their doorsteps. And I was there talking to them, and they're like, look, you know, this is, we live in the shadow of Lee. I was born in the shadow of Lee, and these people don't care. And finally, there's a moment where our lives aren't being changed radically, but people finally started caring. And you have the president of the country basically saying, no, that concern is invalid. Mm -hmm. And that hurts a lot more for them than, than you know, I think people realize. I think people are so caught up in the optics of the moment that they don't realize that there are real communities down in the ground who are, you know, have always lived in the shadow of Confederate flags, of Lee, who are really afraid right now yeah. and who the president has directly threatened their security. Right. Um, the And these people who, who uh, were there... Um, <laughs> it's so many dimensions of this. Uh, who who was behind this uh, protest, which turned out to be the riot? I mean, who are these people, and where did they come from? So another thing that's lost in all this is that uh, the two of the main organizers of the uh, Unite the Right rally, Unite the Right, Unite the Right, were Jason Kessler and Richard Spencer, who were both UVA graduates. Uh, they both come from the area; they know it well. They also, I think, have an intimate knowledge of how people would respond <coughs> to the Lee statue's removal, how people would come out of the woodwork for it. Yeah, um, yeah. This is, you know, it doesn't come out of any, nowhere. It, it, Charlottesville was a, the site for a reason. Um, and Charlottesville, I think, was thinking about getting rid of the Lee statue for the same reason. It is the center of sort of this burgeoning... Uh, white nationalist, white supremacist movement. Um, and then they were there, 
You had Klan chapters coming from around the country. You had neo-Nazis coming from the West Coast uh, coming to join in. And this what was billed as a national uh, rally. And they came. Mm-hmm. And I think we saw, you know, 500 members, or that's the estimate, uh, 500 people participated in a rally. That's not big by any, you know, there's marches that are right. 20, yeah. Yeah. 50 times larger than that. But 500 white supremacists in an area, that that's especially to that community, uh, that's not nothing. And after Charlottesville, um, condemned by people on many on all sides, if you will, and I'd like to use that phrase, many sides, but in effect, supported by the President of the United States, they must feel emboldened now, right? I mean, they came out of the woodwork, and other than, and as opposed to being condemned, right? Here they are saying, yeah, look at these guys. They're 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 no worse than these people who want to take the statue down. Well, if you look back in history, you look at folks like George Wallace back when he was governor of Alabama, right? And something he and the local legitimate quote unquote leaders would do is they would denounce the Klan regularly. They would say both sides. Yeah. The yeah. the the Klan, yeah. the super, you know, the the radicals and the communists, and by communists they usually meant the NAACP. They uh, are causing yeah, they are causing yeah. this violence in Alabama. It is on you know the blood is on all of your hands, and the Klan members would take it as an endorsement, and they knew it was an endorsement, and they knew that by condemning the NAACP on the same grounds that you condemned people who bombed houses, you delegitimize a response to being bombed, right? And so what you see today is right after Trump had that statement. David Duke got on Twitter and said, you know, this is exactly what we're looking for. We thank the president for condemning the people on the other side. And it's the same exact type of response. The Klan and historically has not looked for politicians to say we are Klansmen. We endorse the Klan. They've looked for politicians to basically not denounce the Klan. Yeah. Right to to come out and say that the people of the Klan were fighting or who are fighting the Klan are just as bad as the Klan or have a legitimate protest a, a right. reason for being there or whatever. Um, we, we were we played this a little earlier. You know, Friday night, of course, this started with these um, torches that they had, the tiki torches from uh, from Home Depot. Um, uh, well, they were worried about mosquitoes. I think you know, it's not right. funny, but it's also kind of hilarious. It that is that's, kind of hilarious. That's where that they these went. who they are, but anyhow. So they're marching and they're chanting, um, and there's a little video from Vice. Uh, you can hear the chant change. It starts out with, I, I, I'm getting to the point of what these pe- what their real agenda was, right? Because some people, I think Trump is trying to make the argument, it was just a difference over how we treat our history of our country, right, and some of these Confederate uh, personalities. Um, I think it's pretty clear. Listen to this. So they start out chanting, you will not replace us. It changes pretty quickly here. You will not replace us. You will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Yeah. And then uh, in that same little video uh, from Vice, um, Christopher Cantwell has suddenly emerged as one of the spokes, another spokesperson for the alt right. Uh, he, he's happy with Donald Trump, but Donald Trump is not the person that they really want. You know, they really, the Donald Trump is just like a step toward the guy that they really want in the White House. I'm here to spread ideas, talk, in the hopes that somebody more capable uh, will, will come along and do that. Somebody like Donald Trump who does not give his daughter to a Jew. Good grief. You can't, I mean, you can't get any more ugly than that. I mean, this is pure... Anti-Semitism, pure KKK. I mean, pure, pure Nazi all the way. Right? Yeah, and I think the alt right, whatever claim they had to legitimacy, to not being a part of, you know, they, they they tried their hardest to disassociate themselves from the images of the Klan. But when you get out there and you have a rally with the Klan and you have people saying stuff like that, like that's it. You yeah. are the Klan. Yeah. You are yeah. white supremacist. Right. And the blood is on your hands. 